Hold on, let me just push this out there and we will be good to go. All right, we are now live with UConn's all-time leading scorer, someone I'm really excited to have on, Chris Smith, uh, Connecticut's own. Chris, thanks so much uh, for joining me today. And hey, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. So, Chris, I, I want to start by looking back at the beginning here because I, I have to think Jim Calhoun's pitch to you to come to UConn during that recruitment process was completely different from what it was later on in his career. <laughs> what was that recruiting pitch like to you at that time uh, as he was trying to get you to stay in state and come to UConn? Definitely trying to get me to stay in state. You got to realize where I came from. Uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut, we had a plethora of talent. Charles Smith ended up going to Pittsburgh. Uh, Wes Matthews at Wisconsin. And then we had John Bagley out of Bridgeport as well that went to Boston College. So we had a plethora of talent, and none of the talent kind of stayed in Connecticut. So that was his pitch was like, look, you're very talented. You can go anywhere in the country. Why not Connecticut? Why not be here? Why not help lift this state up? to make it to where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. when, when, when you got there, did you feel any pressure being an in-state kid, playing for the flagship state school? Did, was, <laughs> was there pressure early on in, in feeling like you, you had to succeed or push yourself to a certain level? You know what? It wasn't really a lot of pressure because, uh, you know, I felt like we had a good team. We had Clifford Robinson there, uh, you know, rest in peace to Cliff, mm -hmm. uh, Phil Gamble, uh, Willie McLeod. We had some players that I felt like that could get it done. Lyman the Priest, uh, John Gwen. So I felt like when I got there, I really just needed to fit in with those guys, you know. And uh, my sophomore year, that's when I kind of exploded with uh, Tate George playing the point a lot uh, with uh, Steve Pico and uh, myself. And then uh, we just kind of exploded. And I kind of just really had a really good year, my sophomore year, and felt the confidence in. It wasn't really too much pressure. The only pressure was playing, you know, playing in front of my family, uh, you know, being close to home. That was pretty much it. <laughs> what was it like making that jump from the high school game to the college game? And how big of a difference was it at that time? The speed, I tell everybody, it's funny. I was one of the fastest kids in high school. So I get to UConn and uh, Calhoun always had us running. That was one of our things. We ran all the time. And Clifford Robertson, the center, 6'11", was the fastest guy on our team. And I'm like, wait a minute. It's usually guards. It's never a big man. Yeah. But, I mean, just to see the speed and the strength. I don't know if you remember Willie McLeod, but he had mm -hmm. muscles all over the place. And, uh, you know, just guys like that. And Lyman the Priest had that strength. So it was the strength and the speed that was the big difference from high school to college. When you got there your freshman year and, and you – hit your first Coach Calhoun practice, what was that like? It was an eye-opener. You know, Calhoun was so nice when I first met him, you know what I mean? <laughs> but he did tell me. He tells everybody it's going to be tough. Uh, practice is going to be tough. You're going to be pushed. You're going to play against guys that are really, really good. Uh, I just remember going into practice and trying to check John Gwynn. I mean, he was incredible. You couldn't stop him. And he was like that in games. I mean, he could score 15 points in five minutes. And trying to check him in practice every day was tough, along with Phil Gamble. And uh, Tate, obviously, 6'5", point guard. I really never seen that in high school. So now I'm playing in practice with a guy that's 6'5", 6'6", playing the point guard position. So there were many, many changes. But it just – it just – it helped me to grow a lot more as a player. <laughs> When, when you talk about the intensity of those practices, what was it like being around him, uh, and by him I mean Coach Calhoun, on that day-by-day -day basis? And what were some of the biggest lessons you took away from, you know, having him coach you? Never give up. You know, Coach, I don't care if we won a game by 20 points. We practice the same way every day. We practice like we lost. And sometimes I tell people practice was harder than the games. It really was because we were fighting for playing time. Guys were really fighting to win. And uh, we really wanted to fight for coach because uh, we knew he believed in us. We just had to go out and show it on the court. You, 
you know, going to play in the Big East was just one of those really tough conferences out there. What was it like getting to play in the Big East really <laughs> in, in those glory days back then? Unbelievable. And, you know, I watched the Big East all my life, you know, the Georgetowns, the St. John's. You know, I remember Mark Jackson against Billy Donovan, you know, uh, came, you know, uh, uh, Patrick Ewing and, and those guys at Georgetown. So I've watched the Big East all my life. And to get there and, uh, you know, to play, to play against the Syracuse, to a school that I almost went to. Uh, Billy Owens was a really, really good friend of mine. And in uh, summertime, we used to go to all the Nike camps together and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So he wanted me to go to Syracuse. And to be playing against the Sherman Douglas and uh, Derek Coleman's and Stevie Thompson at those times was just an unbelievable feeling coming up. And, uh, you know, I just thank God that uh, – he gave me the ability to to play with those guys and play well. I love asking guys this question. The Big East just known for pure basketball schools. Where was the toughest place to go on the road and play in the Big East? Uh, the toughest place for me uh, is probably going to be funny, but Villanova. Oh, I hated playing Villanova. I really did. They played this zone all the time, and they slowed the ball down all the time. I, it was hard to get into a rhythm. Uh, Villanova was one of the toughest place, places to play, and also Pitt. Pitt was pretty tough as well. But uh, Villanova, I, I really hated playing in. Going up against so many good players in the Big East, is there someone that sticks out to you as the toughest player you, you had to go up against? Uh, I tell you guys, probably the toughest player to guard uh, was probably uh, Dana Barrows, hmm. uh, Boston College. Uh, between Dana and Sherman, and they, they were two different players. Dana uh, was more of a scorer, and you really couldn't. Uh, he was great off coming off picks and shooting the ball. And uh, Sherman Douglas was uh, the inventor of the alley oop. You know, before. Uh, sure, they really people weren't really alley ooping the ball, but when you played Syracuse, he threw the ball up. Billy and uh, Derek and uh, Stephen went after the ball, and then you know, next thing you know, you, you you're on a highlight reel, you're getting uh, pictures taken of you being dunked <laughs> on and stuff. So, uh, you know, Sherman and definitely Dana Barrows. Interesting. Um, in terms of the the games you played at UConn, you were part of some really memorable ones. Is there one that sticks out to you? You know, we, we could go down the list, but I'm curious to get your your thoughts initially. Is is there one that sticks out to you? Uh, is you know, kind of your I don't know if it's your favorite memory, but uh, you know, the game that just sticks out to you the most. I, I I'll tell you mine. The first one was St. John's in the Gamble. First mm -hmm. game, St. John's in the Gamble Pavilion. Uh, that game, I think I scored thirty plus points or whatever. I'm not really sure, but uh, just the, the excitement to have the kids because we always played at Hartford and uh, to play at the Gamble Pavilion with all those kids and uh, seeing, you know, the crowd and everything like that, that was very exciting. My mother's favorite game is uh, LSU. Obviously, Shaquille O'Neal, NCAA tournament. Uh, you know, uh, Shaquille, I think, was bragging a little bit that they were going to beat us and beat us pretty bad. And then when we won that game, my whole family just went crazy. So those two games. Speaking uh, of the NCAA tournament, I'd be remiss if I did not bring up the, the Tate George shot in, in that game. What, yeah. What's it like being in that moment? Because I think from a fan's perspective, it's easy to remember what it was like uh, being being there and, uh, you know, thinking about that game. What was it like from your perspective being out there, you know, during during that game? Yeah, the Tate George game. I'm sorry, my kids yeah. were uh, bugging me a little bit. Uh, no problem. Yeah, Tate George game. Oh, well, uh, the, the the one that he uh, won the, with the shot, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was number one. Just being at the Meadowlands was unbelievable. Uh, my, you know, my family was there. It's only you know three hours away from, uh, pretty much two and a half, three hours away from Connecticut. But Tate, uh, that was unbelievable. First of all, Scotty Burrell. Heads up, Scotty Burrell. You know, a lot of people probably don't know, but he was a pitcher. Uh, yeah. and, and, you know, so, so Coach, uh, that was brilliant, uh, Coach, to let him take the ball out and uh, have Scotty throw the, you know, the, the full length of the court and uh, Tate George. But Tate, we call Tate Hollywood. If people don't know, that was his nickname. He was Hollywood. So Tate was just smooth all the time and just collected and calm. And, and if you look at that shot, 
it was like he was taking a regular shot. It wasn't it, it wasn't rushed. He was real poised when he took that shot. He turned around, knocked it down. And that's Hollywood. That's tape. That's Hollywood. Being the scorer that you were, did you did you think that there, you know, there was a chance you were getting that final shot there over, over Tate? Oh, that, yeah, I thought I was getting that shot. And uh, I tell you, most of the time at the end of the game, coach writes it up for me to get that shot. But I guess Tate and uh, Scotty had something different in mind. And uh, thank God it worked out. <laughs> What's it been <laughs> like, you know, just being on the court, you know, when that shot goes in? And you're in an NCAA tournament setting. It's probably that, you know, the most exciting of exciting as it could be uh, in, in a game like that. What's it like from your perspective being on the court once you see that shot fall? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, it was just uh, – number one, being in the NCAA tournament is a dream come true for most players anyway. And uh, just to be out there was just a, a major joy for all of us. And uh, and then we, we were very confident as well because we felt like we had a good team and we felt like we could beat anybody in the country. But just being out there was unbelievable. And there's nothing like the NCAA tournament. There's, there's no feeling like the NCAA tournament. And to win a game the way we won in that fashion uh, was just unbelievable. When you're there, you're there for the dream season. You, you've got these exciting games, and it feels like you could start to see some momentum building at the UConn program. Did you ever see it getting to the level where it where it is today, where Coach Calhoun goes and wins three titles? Um, you know, they get the fourth. Uh, you know, under Kevin Ali. Did you ever see that well, coming? I I knew his competitive spirit. I knew he would be a, a, a champion. You know, mm -hmm. but to win three. You know, which is, is, is unbelievable, uh, you know, to take that school to the heights that has been, uh, nobody would have ever thought that, you know, nobody. And uh, Calhoun just done a great job. And, uh, you know, everybody knows Calhoun. He's got a lot of fire. He's very competitive and he's afraid of no one. So <laughs> he'll play anybody at any time. So uh, if you have if you have those attributes, you're going to win, you know. Speaking of, of not being afraid of anyone, I love asking former Calhoun players this. What's it like being on the bench and seeing him stand up for you guys against the refs to the level he is? Because that's always something as a fan. I love to see him go go oh, after yeah. the refs. Always something exciting to, to watch there. What's it like from a player's perspective and having that coach stand up for you and you know really fight for you that Definitely. way? Well, he just gives you that confidence. He's a fighter. You know, uh, coach is a fighter. He'll fight for what he believes in. He believes in his players. He believes in his team. He believed in UConn. And uh, when you see that, you just want to go out and uh, and brawl with them. You know, you want to get into the ring and, and fight and uh, and win. You want to win because he's a winner. And uh, you want to make sure that you uh, uh, bring a winning spirit if you come to UConn. What were your thoughts when, when uh, Coach Calhoun decided to come out of retirement and uh, go coach over at St. Joe's here in West Hartford? Were you surprised to see that? I thought he was crazy. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, what? You accomplished everything that you want. But when you love the game, when you love something, you can't stop. And obviously, uh, Coach really, really loves the game. I just couldn't see him on a yellow bus, you know, uh, <laughs> <being> <laughs> I still haven't seen that. I don't know if he's driving, you know, they drive a coach or it's a yellow bus or whatever, but somebody needs to take a picture. I need to see that. I think we all need to see that. <laughs> <laughs> this this year, fans were really excited for, for UConn coming back and, and being back in the Big East. How, how big do you think it is for UConn to be back home in the Big East? It's huge, uh, especially financially. Uh, you know, they could it's, it's tough to be flying everywhere, especially at this time. Uh, you, you know, most of the teams that we play in the Big East are pretty close. Uh, they're right there. You could take a you know two-hour bus, mm -hmm. a three-hour bus, a five-hour bus, so it's not too bad. You're not flying all over the country. So that makes a huge difference uh, financially. Uh, Basketball-wise, there's nothing like the Big East. Uh, you know, I always call you know New York City the mecca of basketball. You're playing in the Big East tournament at, in, in, at Madison Square Garden. You can't get no better than that. Yeah. And the Big East is tough. Uh, you know, it's it, it's just a tough uh, uh, tournament. It's a ter tough uh, conference. And uh, to win and play in, in the Big East, it just gets you ready for the NCAA tournament. I think by the time you get to the NCAA tournament, 
you you've seen everything in the Big East. You you know you you played against some of the best players, the best coaches, so you're ready for everything. I know the NCAA tournament's the pinnacle. That's that's everyone's goal. But is there some part of you that you know enjoys the challenge almost more per se of playing in a Big East tournament, going to MSG, all that buzz there? You've got all these local teams. It, it, it's a hostile environment, you know, for some, yeah. some some games. How does that compare to playing in the NCAA tournament? Oh, like I said, it's the Mecca of basketball. Whenever you could play Madison Square Garden, I, you know, my uncle took me to games watching the Knicks when I was young. And, you know, you, know, you just think of basketball with Madison Square Garden. So, you know, for me uh, personally, playing in the Big East was was one of the best things that I could do. My whole family was involved. My school friends were there. Uh, everybody was there. And then everybody saw the games. And, uh, you know, when you're playing in the Big East, you just want to show out. You want to show that you can, you belong there. And, uh, you know, UConn got a long history of playing well in the Madison Square Garden. One moment I, I, of your UConn career I wanted to touch on was the game when, when you did uh, move into number one all time uh, in, in scoring there. What was that moment like for you? You hit that three. It's a timeout. You know, you're hugging your mom there. What, what's that all like for you uh, as that's happening? You got a full gamble there. Uh, had to oh, be quite the moment. It was special. Number one, my mother was there. She was. She can really enjoy that as well uh, with myself. But uh, we all we had other first poor kids there too. We played Providence. Chris Watts was on that team. Mm -hmm. He's a, a native of uh, uh, Bridgeport. And also we had Marvin Sadler on that team, Providence College as well. So their families was there. So uh, growing up, uh, you know, all our families, we all played in little leagues and stuff like that. So I had a lot of people there that loved, uh, 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 you know, watching me play. So it was it was just a wonderful uh, time to do it against uh, Providence where I had friends on the other team that could enjoy it as well. I want to move on a little bit from, from basketball to, to what you're up to now, because I think you had a big impact in your playing career and bringing everyone a lot of entertainment here uh, during your playing days. But now, now you're making an even bigger impact in, in the work you've been doing that, uh, you know, during this pandemic. For those who might not be familiar with what you've been doing, why don't you share a bit about the work you've done? Oh, man, I created a T-shirt. Uh, if you go to wearyourmask13.com, and that's W-E-A-R, yamask 13com uh, Partial proceeds go to the food share. Uh, the president of food share, Jason, is a UConn alumni. Uh, we've been, uh, I've been there twice. I've helped out. Uh, right now, we're in, we're in a, a big need. People are losing their jobs. People are losing their lives. And uh, I had the UConn team, thanks to Coach Hurley. He allowed to have the UConn team go down in, experience what's going on in today, and just to help out in the community, help out in the Hartford area, help out in Connecticut. Uh, the food drive was just unbelievable, and I want to thank Jason once again for allowing us to share that moment at Food Share. You know, what's it like getting to interact with today's team, uh, you know, especially in something as important as, uh, you know, at a food drive? What, what's that experience been like? Oh, it was unbelievable. Just to see those kids' faces, they couldn't believe how many people are really struggling today. There were over 3,000, maybe 2,500 cars there. Wow. And they were like, wow, there's a lot of people here that need food. And I said, yeah, you know, this pandemic. Because sometimes when you're in college, you just enjoy the the, the moments of college. You really, you're, you really don't, you know, see what's going on in the outside world. And that allowed them to see what's happening really happening on the outside world of just college basketball. And, uh, you know, it really touched them uh, in their spirits a little bit. So that was that was a great thing uh, for myself to see those young kids really help out. And they were diving in. They were really giving food and doing everything they were supposed to do and uh, really enjoying it. That, that's awesome. And great to hear how, how that team was involved uh, yeah. This year, have you been able to follow along with the team so far in the in the games they've been playing? And any any thoughts yeah, on the, team the so game far? the other night? You know what? I, they lost the game in overtime, but I always say if you play to win, I think they played good enough to win the game. They just uh, didn't hit a free throw here and there, uh, missed a couple rebounds here and there, but they played good enough to win the game. And if they can play good enough to win the game every night, the ball will fall right in there and. and 
in the right place. I think they'll win a lot of games. Absolutely. Chris, uh, I really want to thank you for coming on tonight. Uh, appreciate the, the time again. It's uh, wearyourmask13.com. Yep. Uh, all, you know, got partial proceeds going to food share there, going yep. to a great cause to help to help people in need during this pandemic. So great to have you on tonight talking, talking you. Husky Hoops and uh, some of the work you're doing now. So keep it up and uh, thanks again for coming on. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Have a good night. Well, go Huskies. There we go. Have a All good right. one. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.